Huge NFC divisional breakdown episode for you today. Aaron Rodgers, no longer a part of the NFC North. We break down the whole division, the fantasy players that are going to make a big difference, and some gambles we might be taking with our drafts. Tune in. Great Scott! If my calculations are correct, you are listening to this before your fantasy football drafts have taken place. I have been to the future, and those that followed the advice from the Fantasy Footballer's Ultimate Draft Kit had a spectacular season and withstood many victories. It's almost as if Biff had given each of them a copy of Grey's Sports Almanac. I'd highly recommend heading over to www.ultimatedraftkit.com without any further delay. Welcome to the Fantasy Footballers Podcast with your hosts, Andy Holloway, Jason Moore, and Mike Wright. Oh, welcome in. Thursday, July 20th. The Fantasy Footballers Podcast. <laughs> you sounded like you were changing your mind mid-sentence. No, I know what I'm doing, Mike. Okay. <laughs> All right. Don't worry about it. I, was, I apologize. Uh, it was very confident. Mike, the fantasy hitman, is here. Jason Moore, present, accounted for. Another divisional breakdown episode for you. Yeah, but we're out of that AFC nonsense. Yeah, yeah we're... You, you're an we're NFC the, guy? <laughs> we're to the good teams now. Well, it's, I mean, the Cardinals are an NFC team, so I've just, I grew up believing that the NFC was superior simply because I was just, just like, well, my team is in the NFC, so clearly it's better. And that has, <laughs> that has, that has carried through my life. When I hear NFC, it's just, oh yeah, there, this is better. AFC is like, that's those other guys. Yeah, is it they're they, doing weird stuff over there. Well, it kind of sounds like AFL and AFL just join the NFL later, right? Maybe. Uh, Kyle is uh, with us, right? Kyle, you here? Maybe. I am here. <laughs> <laughs> okay. All right. Uh, from a train car. Uh, Kyle, his, your job is to tell us the amount of Super Bowl victories by AFC versus oh, NFC. Oh, that's interesting. Because there is a better conference yeah technically statistically I, i'm all in on nfc all right i i don't know i don't I'm know what not. the answer is don't tom brady has won too many that, that's fair uh but joe and montana joe montana's nfc he's got some but it's like the, the but Pat, bradshaw's the pats and the steelers yeah. the run yeah. i think i know what's gonna happen here <laughs> but we'll find out welcome into the show nfc north breakdown best ball breakdown today nfl news to talk about potentially very impactful nfl news on a couple of fronts a reminder, we will be hosting a live event, our only live event of the year, Saturday, August 26th at the Palace in Los Angeles. You can get tickets at ballerslive.com. Yep. Every single ticket in that venue is a good ticket, by yes. the way. This is uh, an, an awesome, uh, going to be a full house, an awesome event. Over 1,000 of the Foot Clan will be there. Yeah, we picked this venue out of several places specifically because the place is awesome. Yeah, every it's beautiful. Si every single seat uh, is just perfect. I will also say, uh, even though that the the lower level, the non mezzanine, is sold out, there's mezzanine seats available. There are benefits to the mezzanine mm -hmm. that Jason has considered. Shh. Well, it's so just think about that. It's where the newsies want to be. Oh gosh! Yeah, yeah, that's a deep cut. Yeah, is it now? Is it a deep cut? How wait, Jason? How are you possibly? I'm not, yeah, I just didn't think it was that good. I'm a. I'll be honest with you. I mean, I'm sorry. I'm a newsies guy. Just like oh. I don't know. There's someone out there. There always is. There's the mic people. Yeah, he's right here. I love it. Oh, yeah, Al, thank Al, you, Jeremy. Al's into the newsies. Yeah, guy. no, Jason's over here trying to figure out what the reference actually meant. Did you not remember? Maybe, was, it, maybe not. was it part yeah. of the song or yeah. something? Or? Let's move on, okay? Uh, <laughs> let's just let's have a fantasy football show. <laughs> Sounds good to me. Uh, the Ultimate Draft Kit available now, ultimatedraftkit.com. Head over there. Get primed for your draft. I mean, we're almost there. It's July 20th. 
So you're going to be drafting very soon, and uh, we'll be in camp, and we'll be sharing every bit of news that comes along. Twitter at the FF Ballers, and a reminder, the Dynasty Podcast. Yesterday, brand new episode, top yeah. 10 running back up. You guys went with a top 10, huh? We did. We, Those we, are very enticing. Well, these, Who, what's the top 10? Give me a, give, give me them all. <laughs> <laughs> if, if you slow that down, you'll get it. But, yeah, we, we talked running backs, and, you know, it's quite the time to be talking about running backs. And uh, and so we, we did. We kind of, you know, broke down just the state of what's happening with running backs as well. Breaking news. Yeah, that's right. It's kind of incredible. Yeah. NFC has won the Super Bowl 29 times. The AFC has won the Super Bowl 28 times. Oh! I, I knew it. We are the best. I knew it. Not for long. <laughs> so the if 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 the Chiefs repeat because you know they're talking about the repeat, they will even even it up between the two conferences. Jalen, it's up to you. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> You're our only hope. <laughs> Interesting. I didn't realize it was that close at all. Um, okay, let's get into the news. News and notes from around the league. Well. We have some injury news. The Saints have placed rookie Kendra Miller, running back, on the non-football injury list. Third-round draft pick. Somebody that we like tremendously on yes. film mm. out of TCU, six foot 220, 21 years old, still recovering from MCL surgery. And um, he didn't participate in OTAs or minicamp. And uh, according to Nick Underhill, one of the most trusted beat writers on any, for any team, not a concern is what he's been told. Um, so, you know, he could be activated at any moment, just something to be aware of. Yeah, this was a player we liked so much going into the, like, before the draft, but we knew he, about this injury. This wasn't surprising or new information. I was really surprised when he was drafted, you know, number 71 overall as a day two pick with this injury. I thought he'd plummet. So the, I, I think this means the Saints are committed to him. They do believe in him, just for the fact that they, they weren't worried about this injury. But it's worth remembering, you know, your draft and best ball and stuff like that. Like, he is still coming off this injury. He's not healthy yet. Speaking of recovering from surgery, uh, Isaiah Pacheco, Chiefs running back, still recovering, was practicing with a non-contact jersey, recovering from labrum surgery. Um, and then this one's the bigger piece of, yeah. of news. Uh, the Patriots have hosted Leonard Fournette for a workout on Wednesday. Um, we may have an addition to the running back uh, room for New England. We yeah. should ask Mike how he feels about this news. It's, uh, yeah. It's not my favorite. Yeah, I'm stuck at truck, truck, truck. Guys like, what, what, what. what do you think about the dump truck in it, New England? It's not my favorite, but, I mean, with every – their depth chart, it's, it's – it feels cr uh, crazy at this point that they haven't made a move. And with all the guys who are kind of whirling out there with, you know, with Zeke, Dalvin, Leonard Fournette, and Kareem Hunt is still out there as well. Leonard Fournette, at least skills-wise, seems the least threatening at this point of, of his career. I know that they if, if they sign him, he will still get work and a ton of work. And, like, he can catch the ball as well. He, he kind of comps to, a, you know, a – a, I think an it's, old man I version probably, of Ramondre. I think it's worse than if they had signed Zeke, I'd be happier for Ramondre. Really? Yes. Mm -hmm. And Why is that? Pass catching. Pass catching. Zeke can catch too. Yeah, but Not like Fournette. Fournette is his entire career. He's been an avid pass catcher, pass protector. He's like the definition of a that veteran. That made it sound like he was like a photographer, an avid photographer. <laughs> yeah. He's, also, he, he's a hobby yeah. of his. He's also a professional, um, but he, you know, he's he's excelled in that. Not necessarily efficiency wise, but trust of uh, coaching staffs. Yeah, um, you yeah. know, in, in locker room. Yeah, and just history of doing it. So I, I do think he'll take away more passing work should he sign. Obviously, this this is just news that he's visiting. Yeah, we'll find out. We'll get into the implications if it happens. He may not like the the offer that they make to an aging Leonard Fournette, who's now what twenty. Eight going on twenty nine. Sounds what right. an old man, <laughs> just so old. But um, Ramondre is very high in Mike's rankings. Yeah. So uh, and the potential's there, and we've been trying to. He's been like doing the Matrix dodge all off season. Yes, he has. So, uh, they, but but like you said, the depth chart's so bad, it really feels like Ramondre and no one else. 
Yes. It feels like Ramondre and then some guys well, yeah. that will you probably have, belong on a practice squad. You have Pierre Strong. You yeah. have Kevin Harris. Yeah. You've got, the, I think, Ty Montgomery. Is, is he still around there? He's always around. <laughs> I mean, that. yeah, you're right. You're lurking in the shadows. He's just kinda, he lives in those rehab rooms like yeah. for certain teams. But, yeah, no other news, right, Brooksy? No, sir. Okay. You guys want to get into it? Let's go. Mm-hmm. Let's get divisional. Into the NFC North, our divisional breakdown, looking at changes from 22 to 23, looking at how offenses could function, and we'll break down our predictions for the division, which may, at this point, be more exciting than us all sharing the same opinion of the AFC West. This division is wild. What's... What's very strange is it's been a long time since I have been I've been able to separate the words NFC North and a kind of like a picture of Aaron Rodgers. Like that and I see I Al the Packer fan over there's just kind of like reflecting on that reality because he kind of he just owned this division. They didn't win it every single year, but you thought they were at the beginning of every single year. And he's gone. And it's wide open. It really is. It's very wide open. I mean, there there's not a dominant team um, that has it locked up. And and there's at least three teams, if not four here, that could win the division. So, you know, every year there is a team that goes from worst to first in their division. Sure. It happens, you know, and, and you look at the Bears and you think, that can't happen. They're not ready. But this is the type of division where you don't know what you have in the Packers. You, last year you had the worst Best team of all time in the Minnesota Vikings. A, yeah. a 13 win team with a negative point differential. <laughs> that was, and then they lost pieces. And then the Lions, who are the presumptive, I believe, you know, the, the betting favorites to win the division, they're the Lions. <laughs> you know, it's like, you're gonna, I mean, let's just call a spade a spade. There's things that don't usually go right for certain franchises. Yeah. The last time. That the Packers entered a season without Favre or Aaron Rodgers, Matt LaFleur was 12, their head coach. <laughs> it was 1992. So it's it's different. The Vikings will start there, 13-4 and four last year. Uh, their win total before the season was nine. Outperformed that, yet had that negative point differential. Had the 36-point comeback. I, I, I they lo- had a negative point differential? Yes. They, they were 11-0 and in one-score games, which is the best in the history of the NFL. They won 13 games, and they were outscored on the season. They won 13 games. That's They won 13 that's games not possible. when they were only supposed to win nine, and their Vegas win total has moved down. They, they're like, eh, we were too high last year. Well, that's because they lost their quarterback and star receiver. And, no, oh, no, 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 they didn't. No. In fact, this division what? is the only one in the NFL without a head coach or an offensive coordinator change at all. So all of them are coming back. You got a little okay. bit. You know, if you remember, and I started watching that documentary, the quarterback one that uh, you yeah, talked about you with Kirk Cousins in it, and it reminded you of how the season started where they came out and they absolutely looked incredible on offense. They destroyed the Packers. And then the next game, it fell off a cliff. And that was kind of their season, except for they just managed to win the close ball games. Um, if games had ended in the third quarter, this was a 7-10 and 10 team. Speaking of that, the, the documentary there, is is Kirk Cousins Go for it. Yeah. the most boring person in the, no. in the history? No. Second most boring. Okay. <laughs> the be, mo- the most boring, Drew Brees. Okay. But just Drew Brees... Like- and and I think Kirk Cousins are the two most boring people in history. Like Cousins, this is your time to shine, man. And you're just, and I've I've been defending you for years. It's like you're no, you're he's a good quarterback. He's a good quarterback. He is a good quarterback. And you're like, oh man, this guy is it's watching paint dry he, when he's talking. He has <laughs> Sorry, one Sorry, Kirk. He has I one like moment him. in his entire career that's entered. Yeah, the, the, you sure. like that. That's no, it. Then there's no, the, no, no, there's no, the no. two. There's the, there's the oh, dancing the on the plane with all the chains. Oh, yeah. okay. Anytime, that was pretty cringy. Anytime he does nah, something f- that is outlandish, it becomes popular because he's so boring. Oh, man, he was. Uh, but let, look, is this offense going to be boring for fantasy players? That's the question. I mean, we had a much more exciting situation last year. Kirk Cousins being drafted very, very late yet led the NFL in total air yards, third down passing touchdowns. Thank you, Justin Jefferson. Um, you know, he struggled at times. They go, they add Jordan Addison in the first round, a player that um, is is very, very dynamic, 
uh, a huge upgrade, if not for game one, for, you know, the majority of this season is going to be a huge upgrade for this team over Adam Thielen. Uh, they spent a seventh rounder on Dwayne McBride, but the offense is mostly intact. I mean, Alexander Madison's going to uh, take over. Yes. That's a, a big storyline. We can line. all agree on that part. Yeah, well, it's a huge storyline. I mean, Dalvin Cook is gone. Where he will land, we, we still don't know. But Alexander Madison, when he's had opportunities with Dalvin Cook injured, has averaged 16.9 fantasy points per game in those games. His metrics in totality aren't as strong as his metrics when he's been given those chances. It's always hard in these situations to know what a player really has. Sure. Do they have the uh, stamina to be an every down back? Does the team view them as that in the light of – you know, in light of the uh, running back room in Minnesota, we've had a lot of running backs that have been very efficient with small amounts of work. He's kind of been the opposite. Mm -hmm. He's had low efficiency under four a carry. Um, but he's built for a workload. He's built for a workload. I don't know how trustworthy he'll be in the passing game because I don't know how the team's going to draw that up. I mean, they do have some players behind him that are unproven. So, that's a long way of saying we have him kind of all over the map in terms of where he's ranked. And he's going in the sixth round right now. We have him at RB21. Mike's the highest at yeah, 17. I'm pulling so, him up. Um, I, but not unreasonably. No, I mean, not RB, at all. I, RB24 is his ADP. I, I, I think um, I've got him too low. I think I've got him at 23 right now. Oh, I, pro and, I probably have him the lowest. <laughs> but, I mean, none of us are, are super low. We're, we're, sl we're slightly ahead of ADP right now. ADP, he's running back 24. If he... The way this depth chart looks, he's going to get a lot of work. He doesn't have to be great to beat a, the the least good, you know, RB two. He'll be a top twenty back just from volume alone. But there is the chance that he's good, uh, that he performs in the manner that we've seen him play when he's had the opportunity to be the guy. And so there's an upside case here where he's he's a running back one. He's a top twelve running back. Where he's being drafted right now at RB24 is partially due to the fact that his ADP started this offseason super low. Dalvin Cook was ahead of him, and then you know they started to creep, and then there were rumors. And but it, it was it's such a slow transition that it's difficult to just take a guy who was the running back 40 or whatever and then grab him at running back 15. You feel like you're making a drastic mistake yeah, that's fair. when you're drafting. So his his ADP, I think, is is nerfed in part by that, and he's a very good pick because of that. I, I believe he's being drafted at his floor, and with this defense, I want pieces of the Minnesota Vikings offense. They're going to have to – they're just going to have to play fast at the end of games. I mean, if you look at what happened last year, the way that they won in the fourth quarters uh, – in the fourth quarter – they had 169 fourth quarter points. That's the fifth most over the last 30 years per Warren Sharp. It's because it was like, man, we're down. We got to we gotta go. And if they're scoring a lot of points to keep up with a bad defense, I'm in. Yeah, I think he's a good player. Um, I've loved him since he was a prospect. I, I agree with Andy that I can't say for sure that he is going to be the primary pass-catching running back. What I can say is I believe that he is – he is very capable. But I know it's been a while, but you can go back to his to college when he played at Boise State. He was heavily featured as a pass catching running back. I mean, so and and had the skills to do it. So I think it's just now the opportunity is finally there. I don't blame the the Minnesota Vikings at all for playing. Dalvin Cook was great for many many years. He should be the one playing in front of Alexander Madison, but it's now his opportunity. I think he is by far the best running back on the roster and what Jason's saying of this is going to be a potent offense. He should be the guy who's getting, you know, in the 60 percentile of the opportunities, maybe even more with goal line and should get re receiving work. So he's incredibly interesting for me. I am curious how the rotation is going to be because you're not going to bring in Madison and then use him more than Dalvin cook. I don't believe. Um, so, you know, Ty Chandler, Dwayne McBride, uh, Kene Nwangwu. Yeah. Um, Nwangwu is the, the, I think the one that's the the biggest threat to him taking away receiving work. See, I, oh, uh, receiving work, yeah. sure. In, he's in the good. Sense that, he's a good player. Yeah, he's mostly been a special teams guy. Uh, Dwayne McBride doesn't touch the ball in the passing game. Like the, right. The, I believe he had five college receptions. Because um, he's, he uses gloves. 
So <laughs> yeah, so you scan never. <laughs> right, that's what I meant. You oh, just man. never, never touched. Oh the, yeah. yeah. Well, no, that's good. But my newsy. No, joke. it wasn't good, but it's still better than the newsy <laughs> thing. Uh, Justin Jefferson's good. The wide receiver one. Draft six, him. Six most receiving yards of all time. Um, you know he did bust twenty nine percent of the time last year. We went over that in the very early part of the off season in our consistency shows. But uh, yeah, draft him. Jordan Addison, KJ Osborne. TJ Hawkinson, the other pass catching weapons in this offense, an offense that did use Dalvin Cook a lot in the passing game. There's always the possibility that some of that is distributed amongst the trustworthy TJ Hawkinson and KG Osborne over the final month of the year when he had an opportunity. You know, talk about Madison taking advantage of opportunities. Osborne was the wide receiver two, 12, and 13, three of the last four weeks. So, was very capable in that department. And Jordan Addison while undersized, he is going to be utilized all over the field. Um, you know, we haven't seen him. What's the latest on the injury front? We just don't know. No, it's an undisclosed injury. The I, I don't think that their rookies have reported yet for training camp because the coaching is in place from last year. But any day now, they'll get back together, and we'll see whether or not he is there ready for training camp. The expectation was his undisclosed injury kept him out of the, the rookie camps and mini camps but he'd be good to go for training camp. We'll find out here in a couple days. I'll start to worry if he shows up to training camp still with the undisclosed, hopefully disclosed injury at that point. But his talent, even though he's undersized, the fact that he's across the field from Justin Jefferson and won't have hard coverage, the fact that he's replacing an Adam Thielen who ran the second most routes in the NFL, the opportunity is there, the talent is there. The bad defense. You've said, you said that a lot. Are you assured that he's replacing him yeah, as opposed I, to being utilized – well, differently, I, I, I certainly think that there's a coaching staff that's done a good job using the the players they have. So I don't think they're just going to rerun last year's script and then say, OK, well, we're taking Adam Thielen out, putting Addison in. But the point is more that they run a lot of routes. The number one player in routes run was Justin Jefferson. So this is a team that's just going to throw the ball a ton and they have an absence, a giant hole to fill and that's where Jordan Addison's opportunity even if it's not the same it, he's going to be on the field running so many routes so I after the last couple mock drafts I, I saw some feedback talking about TJ Hawkinson they the, the opinions out there was that we are just avoiding this guy they don't understand he, he won people weeks he's got an opportunity he was great in Minnesota after the trade are, are you down on TJ Hawkinson uh, I laid it out when we did our, our early bust picks uh that TJ Hawkinson, we have him ranked basically where you know the rest of the the industry has him ranked. Have him ranked pretty close to his actual ADP. The problem is, yeah, he had you know he had two monster weeks, one in Detroit, one in Minnesota. But when he was with Minnesota, it was just it was consistently okay. He wasn't destroying you, but there I think it was what was. I think it was like one top five performance or something like that. I can go relook it up, but it was just he's got he's got two of those or no wait you're at one min, top five yeah it, it, yeah, with yeah. Minnesota yep. which it should be better because now he has an actual off season to be integrated and be a focal point of the offense. The problem is what you are giving up when you draft T.J. Hawkinson, who I think will just be okay. Here, here's a here's a different thought though. Maybe we're missing this because touchdown variability is significant at the tight end position. He only scored in two games mm -hmm. since he came over from from the in the trade. But you know what his target pace was? I mean, he yeah, he was catching a ton. Hundred and two receptions. Yeah, and and that's not even really fair because he only played forty six percent of snaps in the final week. If you throw the final week out, which was an outlier, one target, one catch, forty six percent of snaps, his target pace was above. Travis Kelsey, 160 targets, 111 receptions, 950 yards. If I the guess touchdowns my, come. I, my point is if yeah. the touchdowns comes, he, he actually does have the ability to get into the top two at the position. And everything we're saying about Adam Thielen being a, yes. you know giant vacated targets, you could argue that that's better for, for Hawks. And I don't – Part of my argument was, though, that was Adam Thielen was already vacating those targets <laughs> right. while he was on the team. And those, those were no, – there I'm, was no one else – there wasn't a – Jordan Addison trying on to the represent team. the bull case. Sure. Yeah. The the way that I project it is that Addison is better than Thielen. Will take more targets away from Hawkinson. That Hawkinson will be the third in targets. But there is cert. It's certainly worthy of saying and realizing that that isn't a guarantee, and that Hawkinson could be the two 
and absolutely he has a bull case. I am going to move on, but I'll be very curious to see where you have Minnesota ranked at the end of the show. Back in a minute. All right, this is a fun team to talk about. Mm -hmm. The Detroit Lions, who went 9-8 and eight last year despite having a 6.5 win total from Vegas. This year, sportsbooks have, uh, have them at 9.5. I mean, that's something. Mm -hmm. You know, it's a preseason win. Preseason hype piece they, for the which, Lions. This, that would be back-to-back -back then. If they can take care of the off-season and preseason hype, That'd be two years in a row that they've won. <laughs> uh, they went 12-5 and five against the spread, nearly made the playoffs, beat the Packers, knocked them out, finished 8-2. and two. That's where a lot of the excitement is, is their finish to the season. Right. Um, you know, this is, a, this is a team that you feel like you almost have to step on eggshells to fully endorse because of, you know, it, it isn't, well, it is statistical, but it's also kind of like, just the feeling around this team. In 2019, the Browns became the new hotness of the offseason. That was actually the year where Jason's bold prediction was that their fantasy options wouldn't provide. They were all being drafted very highly, and then their season was terrible. So, I look, I'm rooting for Guns Mahoney and this, and this roster, but, um, you know, you don't want to let, as a fantasy player, a lot of hype around a team's on-field performance kind of uh, – betray your your wisdom when it comes to which players you're actually putting on your fantasy team because those names might differ quite a bit this team has a lot of confidence in Jared Goff for example and we can start there we could talk about them fifth in points per game that's a good reason to like what Jared Goff did last year but we also saw 17 touchdowns from Jamal Williams on the ground Jared Goff he was great at home mm -hmm. yeah um they were they were amazing at home but from a fantasy perspective, he was nearly unplayable last year. There were a couple of opportunities that I remember, you know. It was when, when it was a, a matchup that you wanted a streamer against and Jared Goff was at home. I, you had it with Jacksonville, Minnesota, like that that back-to-back. -back. And he came through as the quarterback for both of those. And then championship week at home against Chicago, you knew that he was going to come through. Yeah, his home road splits uh, last year, 21.3 fantasy points per game at home. 11.5 on the road. So, Goff this year, when you look at the kind of weapons that he has, Almon Ross St. Brown, Jamison Williams, out for six games, comes back. Marvin Jones Jr., he's back in Detroit. Um, <laughs> yeah. Jameer Gibbs, David Montgomery, Sam Laporta, a tight end that we really love. Um, rookie. Rookie has an opportunity to contribute to Goff's stat line, even if he's not going to have a big year necessarily week to week. Is golf being undervalued at QB seventeen, where he's being drafted? Nope. Yeah, I don't think so. I think nope. that's about where he belongs. He's not going to be someone you draft to be a weekly starter. If you're playing in best ball, he's just kind of a filler guy that you hope fits in the right puzzle piece matchup plays with the other quarterbacks you have. He isn't a prolific touchdown thrower, which is part of why I think Jamal Williams had so many touchdowns. They're like, hey, we're near. The goal line, let's just push this in with our great offensive line, and that's why I like David Montgomery because he's filling that role, and Jared Goff's still the quarterback. They so, do have a juicy start to the year because they, they face Kansas City in week one, which, you know. But it's on the road. Yeah, it's on the road, but the over-under is 54 points already. And then they're at it's, home against Seattle, at home against Atlanta. I'm just pointing that out because. Yeah, that's a nice start. You could, you could make a bet on some of these guys, and if those first three weeks are terrible, it's a bad bet. But. So if I'm looking at it right, trying to quickly box score hunt, on the road, Jared Goff had one great game. It was on the road against the Carolina Panthers, who were not the best team. He was the quarterback two that week. But other than that, his highest finish on a road game, looking at our how we have it on our website, would have been uh, QB 17. Like So he had the one explosive game on the road, and then the other ones were just – not great. Now, there, there is the, – the bull case for Jared Goff is – what was the number of Jamal Williams rushing touchdowns? 17. If that bounces – like e e Which it will. Even if David – if Montgomery, who we project to be the goal line back, gets 10. Right, which and, would be a good year. And seven or so touchdowns bounce back to Jared Goff, 
That's a pretty big difference. And, and Jamison Williams is a home run hitter. When he gets him back midseason, that's a player they didn't have available last year. I think he had one catch, right? And it was a touchdown. So yes, uh, that Jameson was it, Williams, right? That I was think one, that was one it, catch yeah. for a for a touchdown. He will be a player that really elevates the offense. I think. In the beginning, they may be leaning on the pass catching work of these two running backs, though. Yeah. So let's talk about them. Jameer Gibbs, just an electric player, uh, a wonderful pass catcher. Uh, a, a super, super early high draft capital selection by this team that kind of surprised everybody because they invested in David Montgomery, who is also a much better pass catcher than Jamal Williams was. Yeah. They have pass catchers in the backfield that are going to be able to step in and provide value for Goff. The the GM just came out and he was talking about the changes and he, he mentioned that. He mentioned that David Montgomery is a much better pass catcher and it was ironic because and then he's talking up uh, Jameer Gibbs pass catching. They are clearly wanting uh, to utilize the running backs in the passing game. So that is another feather in the cap of Jared Goff where you go, okay, if if the running game is going to start shifting to the air, little dump offs to, I mean, Jameer Gibbs is going to have a 40-yard touchdown reception this year. That's going to go to Goff. And, uh, you know, th those things will happen because he's so explosive. 25 receptions of 15-plus yards over the last uh, three seasons for for Jameer Gibbs uh, at Alabama. He's he's very, very explosive, and he, he's a weapon more in the passing game than in the running game. This feels like a team that – and it was like this last year, but maybe even more this year with Jameer Gibbs. A team where any, any week you could catch lightning in a bottle. At any week you could, you could kind of roll the dice on some of these options, even like Goff in the streaming matchup. And if you catch one of those weeks where they are putting up a huge game. I mean, they were bad on defense, right? That was 29th the, against yes. the rush, 30th against the pass, 28th in points against. They've tried to strengthen that. That's been kind of the Guns Mahoney, Dan Campbell um, MO in his career, but they didn't have personnel to do that. What's that? I just, I, I, they, they tried to fix. Give me a break. They traded. I'm sorry. I know the Lions fans don't want to hear it anymore, but you you could have fixed it. You could have drafted a great edge rusher. Instead, you you thought, you know what our team needs from last year? We need to just change our running backs who were really good last year. We just need to slightly upgrade them and get a linebacker. That'll help. That we were, we were joking it about is, the. It is a strange decision. We we're joking about the, the. Not joking. Just looking at the facts of the NFL and the franchise tag and how the value of all these positions has gone up. The only positions that like aren't paid more anymore, or paid less, is like running backs. They're pretty worthless. Linebackers. They're pretty worthless. Let's get a running back and a linebacker with our two most valuable picks. First, second, and third round to the offensive side of the ball, including a quarterback in Hinden Hooker that won't play. So that part. Maybe they're committing to their fantasy production, needing to throw the ball a lot. Montgomery, Gibbs. Um, Gibbs has a huge ceiling. Yes, agreed. Uh, uh, we talked about it when we we're, were in the AFC West. Like It's easy for Eckler to finish high just because of the reception totals. Throw the touchdown predictability out. But Jameer Gibbs can hit home runs, check. Catches the, catches the ball better than you know wide receivers sometimes, check. And then you have no Jamison Williams and an aged Marvin Jones. So the first six weeks could be the coming out party for Jameer Gibbs earlier than sometimes running back rookies even do produce. Yeah, he doesn't have to have 250 carries to be a top 10 running back. Uh, receptions, 181 carries would be fine. Uh, receptions are worth so much more in fantasy football uh, for running backs than carries are. I mean, it's just it, it, Jameer Gibbs comes into the NFL as a top 10 receiving back in the NFL already and then I'm sure quickly as his career progresses he's going to change into the top five top three maybe the best pass catching running back Mike is the average draft position of Amon Ross St. Brown appropriate in your mind wide receiver nine right now mid second round pick I think so he is we've talked about him a, a lot also on over on the dynasty podcast of it just he had all he has done is produce you know, the the back half of the rookie year, league winning player. Last year, he is the he's the wide receiver eight. He, he 146 was, targets. He was the wide receiver eight, played in sixteen games. The issue was you just you had more goodish games than really explosive games. I so I think that that just that affects how you think about him, but he is 
he is a great player and he's reliable and he's going to be just absolutely peppered with it reminds so me much of, work. Of like Deontay two years ago. That type of like you got goodish and, and, games all the time. And like Keenan. And Keenan. Yeah. Or Landry from days ago. Yeah, old. I was going to oh, say yeah, old school yeah, Landry yeah. Is, yeah. is really my comp for him. The fact that he finishes the wide receiver eight and he only had six touchdowns, you, you, you can see that this is going to be a top 15 wide receiver as kind of a guarantee. And if touchdowns happen to come his way, because like we said, Jamal Williams isn't punching him in, then he's a, you know, he's a top six guy. 28% target share. All right, moving on to the Packers, eight and nine last year. No more Aaron Rodgers. They had an 11 uh, win total. It's love time. It's love time. Uh, seven and a half is their win total this year. So it's gone down. They were four and five in one score games. De Devontae Adams was gone last year. They were 14th in points per game, 32nd in pace of play. Oh, so slow. Come on, man. So if you want to make the case for potential improvement and what Jordan Love brings to the table, maybe they can play faster. Maybe he can be le maybe he's less efficient than Aaron Rodgers, but he just gets to he just gets more plays. More opportunities to show us what he has. Um, is this a team? Let me let me put it this way as we walk through the weapons. There's a lot of kind of uncertainty around the Packers. Mm -hmm. Is that opportunity for fantasy players? Is there a is there the potential for this team to kind of come out? We've seen Matt, uh, Matt LaFleur lead this team to division title after division title. Is there a world where this team makes a very seamless transition simply because of their kind of organizational stability, the fact that they have weapons like an Aaron Jones, Christian Watts in the high draft capital, Romeo Dobbs? Yeah, I, Are I, they a sneaky good fantasy option? Uh, I, I think they're a sneaky – I think they could be a sneaky good NFL team with, you know, well run by Matt LaFleur. They, you know, they're in a situation where they know how to win games – they're a well-run organization. The team construction roster-wise is very good. The, the obvious question mark, the hardship is, is Jordan Love any good? Because if Jordan Love sucks, then they're going to be a, a basement-dwelling team because they don't have a quarterback. And if Jordan Love comes out and says, yeah, I've been behind Aaron Rodgers for years. I've learned. I know this system. I was drafted high for a reason. Look, I'm not bad. If he's just not bad, if I think he this says is a, that though. That's a problem. <laughs> that is like if he actually I've vocalizes. I've been trying to tell it. you that I'm not bad, <laughs> right? That's how I always really pump myself yeah. up. I look, am not look, bad at looking this. in the mirror every time he scores a throws yeah. a touchdown. Just looks in the mirror. You're Jordan Love. You are. You are not bad. You are not bad. You are. Don't listen to them. You are not bad. Yeah. Um, but my point is, <laughs> he doesn't have to be great for this team to do well. He just has to be what Jordan Love, I believe, is, which is not bad. Okay. Um, and what he believes. I think he this is. is one of those ones where he may be. I think this may be a surprisingly good year for Jordan Love. I can agree with that. Um, he's. He, I was just talking to a, a buddy of mine who's a Packer fan. He's like, Ugh. he's like, what? What do you think, Mike? He is he. The 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 roster that they have built is so strong around Jordan Love. Mm -hmm. And all he has to do is be, I guess, not bad. At the time, I was saying if he just has to be an average quarterback and they can have success and win the division. Brooks is sending a note in our Slack channel that says it sounds like that's something Russell Wilson <laughs> would say to amp himself up after all those games last year. I'm not bad. I'm not bad. And then he rips a bite of the sandwich. Mm -hmm. Danger rich. <laughs> so, yeah, they, they spent two – uh, of their first three picks on tight ends, uh, they added Jaden Reed in the second round, mm -hmm. another wide receiver weapon. Um, these are very interesting teams to analyze for fantasy because by a lot of respects, Christian Watson, I mean, this guy has wheels. You know, he, he just beats people in the secondary. Romeo Dobbs, we know he's talented, but there's so much of, of kind of doubting the kind of full potential of these players and Watson and Dobbs and, um, you know, this tight end room that they're adding. And we don't know what Jaden Reed's role is going to be. And A.J. Dillon was a bit of a disappointment last year. He was. Like, the most known commodity by far is Aaron Jones. Mm -hmm. And I guess my point is is that if they are good, if some of these – if there's a chance that they're a good team to win, that can win the division, then Aaron Jones is going to have a much better season than the RB16 where he's being drafted. So he doesn't feel good to draft because you don't have this – you don't have the film in your head of Jordan Love and these other players moving the ball down the field and getting it done. 
But if they're middle of the pack, he will outperform RB16. Yeah, right? I, I, I believe that actually almost every single one of the Packers players are going to outperform their ADP. The only one that is a little scary is Christian Watson. His hotness. But wide receiver 25. Well, sure, but my, my – He should beat that. He could definitely beat that. I, I I have him, I believe, higher than that. So obviously, I I'm projecting. But he, my point is, like wide receiver twenty five. That's a that's a decent bar. Everyone else has the lowest bar ever. Aaron Jones has been a top twelve quarterback, a top twelve running back for years, and he's being drafted as the running back sixteen. Uh, you you know, AJ Dillon's running back thirty two. Romeo Dobbs wide receiver sixty one. Like this team should outproduce this this ADP. Yeah, and you can't really hold having a pile of touchdowns in a small set of games against Christian Watson. It's easy to do because it's not like, okay, he's not going to score three, two, one, one every single week. But like seeing it on display for a stretch of games when Aaron Rodgers didn't have a great season um, showed the potential. Yeah. So whether this team lets Jordan Love, whether Jordan Love's capable of challenging downfield, we'll, we'll learn that. But um, everything's been very positive on the Jordan Love front. So I just want to keep our eyes open. To, to the point Jason made that maybe, I mean, they get to play Chicago in week one, Atlanta week two, then they're at home against New Orleans, at home against Detroit. Teams, There's some good potential games there. Teams see their quarterbacks the behind the scenes more than we do. You, you know, you, Trey Lance has been in practice plenty for the 49ers. The 49ers clearly are like, they're wanting to, they're wanting to like, oh, what can we do? You know, the, the, the Packers have moved on from Aaron Rodgers. They chose to trade him. They chose to give you know a, another uh, you know single year contract to Jordan Love and uh, extend him a little bit. I think they believe in him. All right, duh, Bears, three and fourteen last year, seven uh, seven win total in twenty twenty two, seven and a half this year. Uh, we kept joking that they were just kind of executing the plan, like we had productive fantasy games from Justin Fields and yet they just would lose at the end um, and got themselves a number one pick and a big trade, and now they add DJ Moore. They add uh, Deontay Foreman to the backfield after losing David Montgomery. So talk about the Bears, Mike. Sure. I mean, is there I'll, – I'll start it at the top with, okay. ju with Justin Fields as uh, he's going as the QB6, which that's fine. But now we're we're in the wild world of of quarterbacks are being drafted very early. Justin Fields at the back of the fourth. I think that's a, I think it's fair, um, because I I do think that there is a there is a world where Justin Fields finishes as a top three quarterback because of his ability on the ground from week six on last year, almost twenty five fantasy points a game, which is just absolutely redonkulous to be averaging that and now you've added dj moore i don't we're not overly excited about dj moore for him of going from a low pass volume maybe not the best passing quarterback situation to another team that's the low volume justin fields needs to improve as a passer so like this isn't stefan diggs going to the bills i don't think it's that type of an upgrade but it's a massive upgrade to the wide receivers that they had last year uh, like DJ Moore is a true number one. So to have a true number one out there, maybe you get something out of Chase Claypool and Darnell Mooney is is still around, who is a, an excellent deep threat. Like Justin Fields can take what he did on the ground and improve in the passing game, which is what I would project to happen. And that turns into, like, that's that's when you get Lamar Jackson's MVP year. When his run began, which was a long stretch. You're talking week six through the yes. end of the year. He missed a couple games due to injury. But that was a 1,600-yard rushing pace mm -hmm. for Justin Fields. And I do uh, – I have wondered a little bit about blindness to DJ Moore. The, um, the song, when you put the DJ Moore album on, mm -hmm. is the same song every yeah. single year. But the Diggs comparison, it's in your head because the shot sure. – Now, I, I don't like the ADP. I'm actually surprised it's not more depressed. I think it's one of those things where the the, the trade has, has propped it up. I wish it was lower because then I would be in. But I do think that there's a chance you have a breakout season. I mean, if he throws for, you know, even 
you know, what, 3,200 yards. Yeah. I mean, maybe that's 3,100. Mid, mid threes. You still are going to have opportunities for DJ Moore in this offense, but it's going to be it's going to be a red light, green light. It's not going to be an every week production the situation. When he's he is so he is clearly the number one. Yes. So I mean, he's going to be the first read in so many plays. If they're running a, a run pass option, that target is going to go to DJ Moore. Is like that. That's how the play will be designed. So it there's a chance that DJ Moore. Does, it's an option because he's so good, but I'm not. None of us are projecting it. The running back room is. Very interesting with David Montgomery yes. departing. You have the addition of Deonta Foreman, who had three top ten weeks last year in Carolina, two of them against Atlanta, uh, one against Detroit. He averaged four and a half a carry last year. They bring him in as a veteran to add to Khalil Herbert. Herbert missed some time in the middle of the year. He's had some big games, had 157 yards in week three against Houston. Uh, this situation, I think on one hand, you could be like, you know, we just talked about Madison. I think some people want to just say, okay, next man up is Khalil Herbert. It's the same situation as Madison. And then I think other people look at it and just don't have any confidence in Herbert. And you see his ADP is nowhere near Madison's. You know, he's at almost RB 40, 10th round pick. Do we really, is that all attributed to Deontay Foreman and as an addition? No, I, I don't think it's just attributed to that. Like I've pretty much tried to stay away from the Bears backfield because this is even though Brooks doesn't like you for that right like Brooks is he came up to me the other day I, yeah. I haven't told this story we were in the break room mm -hmm. he comes he spits right in my face he spit just in your a face? loogie yeah. and I didn't know he could do such a good loogie okay just... too far too far <laughs> that did not happen no 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 <laughs> hey, did you feel like you had to publicly make sure our audience no. <laughs> didn't believe you were spitting a loogie in his face. Yeah, I didn't no. like. I didn't like where that went. I didn't <laughs> well, think it was afterward. going there. Bro he Brooks didn't is, get to the end. Yeah, I didn't get to the end. The, uh, what Bro if it had just been water? Mm. No, no, no. Oh, he, right. Brooks is the most mild man. <laughs> that is the funniest. Honestly, story. if you spit in my face sometimes, Brooks, I will take whatever you have to say after that. The most serious I've <laughs> yeah, ever oh, taken I anything. I will listen in my life. Um, I, I will. So you've got. Bull cases for both Khalil Herbert and Deontay Foreman. Deontay Foreman, I think, is a very good player. He lost a big chunk of his career to an Achilles injury. He's kind of back. He showed flashes last year. They brought him in. If he's the guy, if he's the dude, and and you know he should be an efficient high end rusher. He's a big body back that can get touchdowns. I like Deontay Foreman. I I loved well, him from be, before the the NFL draft. Khalil Herbert, like Brooks likes. I mean, and me, how and, dare and, you? And, and, well, sure. Uh, the other day in the break room, Mike, Mike came up to me <laughs> and he spit right in my face. Khalil Herbert's had a few opportunities without David Montgomery. And like Alexander Madison, when those opportunities arose, he was awesome. Um, he's also he ranked first in rushing yards over expectation last year. He's a really good running back. Yeah, the, like the games that you Andy highlighted the Houston game. That's. You should. You should have a big game against Houston, but the, the follow-up week was against the Giants where he was 19 for 77 on the ground. He had a game against the Dallas Cowboys where he was 16 for 99. Like, and the, 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 the couple years ago when David Montgomery missed a game or two and Khalil Herbert had the opportunity, he had this huge game against the Tampa Bay Buccaneers who at the time were the best rush defense, and mm -hmm. I, I think that ended up was the Super Bowl year, if I'm not mistaken. It, like Khalil Herbert is extremely good. He is a very, very good running. Yeah, so I, think, I, I don't, think. <laughs> I don't mind betting on either of these guys, and I think most people bet on Herbert. The reason that I kind of shy away though is because of Justin Fields. Justin Fields can be a goal line vulture and take touchdowns away from the running backs already, and he's not going to check it down to running backs. None of these no. guys are going to be huge pass catchers. So if if you're not a huge pass catcher and it ends up in a three-way rotation with uh, Roshan Johnson, the rookie they brought in, and they're yeah, not – Yeah, You know, it's just yep. like – It's like if you add another back to Tampa, how confident are you in Rashad White at that point? Right. Yeah. But Alexander the, Madison, third-round pick. Kyle Herbert, sixth-round pick. Yes. Worthy of keeping in your head because – In the real this is NFL a final, draft. Yeah, this is the final year for Khalil Herbert, I believe. Uh, is it is not? It, I would have to – I could on, be completely check. wrong. In which case – This is Brooks, year three. He's got one more. Spit him. Okay. <laughs> Uh, so, Cole Komet. Here, just real real quick. No, I'm sorry, Mike. Khalil Herbert, <laughs> like, 
for Jay, I don't agree with Jason saying I shy away. It's the running back thirty nine in the this tenth is your, round. This is your no RB. This this is a, yeah. This is a zero yeah, R yeah. potential zero RB hero. I completely agree with yeah. Justin Fields will take some rushing touchdowns. They're not going to catch passes, but Khalil Herbert with the with the volume can be a he can be a low level running back too that you're getting in the tenth round. So I personally I think. Pick who you think it is, uh, Khalil Herbert or Deonta Foreman. I would draft at least one of those guys for free in almost every one of my drafts. I I am going to – I think I'm going to make the change. I, I've been kind of sticking with my early Deonta Foreman. You know, when they signed him, I thought he was going to come in and be the guy. But Herbert's the better back. And so I, I think I'm going to change. Right. And really, okay. if I can be honest, I think that the biggest uh, revelation for, like, opening my eyes – was that Luki? You know, it's like <laughs> <laughs> that's good. That, that yeah. definitely happened. That definitely <laughs> happened. Contract year, Cole Komet, breakout season. Yes, no, 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 no. Fifty for five forty-four. He, womp, womp. yeah. I mean, he he had a he had a great end of year, touchdowns. Uh, but it was it was really touchdowns. Yeah, and now you have. Like and the reason we love DJ or we're okay with DJ Moore is because he's clearly the best guy on the field. And what? when Cole Komet was having his run at the end, I mean they had this they had nothing. Did have a lot of red zone targets. Um uh, Chase Claypool, not worried about him stealing some of the DJ Moore? Nope. Okay. Nope. Anything else on Chase Claypool? <laughs> they traded the number Just, thirty two. By the way, they yeah. did they Just, did add Robert Tunyon to the tight end room. Okay. He he's a capable pass catcher. No. Chase Claypool. What's funny is like he, he came just, over. He was unused. It's he was just sadness. For the, Chase the, Claypool. The, 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 the capital they gave up. They gave up essentially yes. a first round pick for Chase Claypool. But he is talented. Like he he can get the job done. And he's the wide receiver three for this team. I saw him doing some really cool slow motion pool catches the other day, like leaping off the side yeah. and, and splashing down in the pool. I saw him doing with Juju. Like, I saw him doing modeling in Paris. I believe. Well, yes, yeah, like about, a couple weeks ago. That. Um, Tunyon actually had more receptions some, than Cole Komet last year. And some charitable work in there as well for Mr. Claypool. Wow, he was, I'm just saying. I think it's it's just sad. It's sad. My, Mike, was that your way of trying to redeem Claypool? Well, I'm just like, we're, we're dunking on him for, well, he's posting pool videos. No, I just and, said that's what I saw. modeling. He, he was but, very, he was yeah. very strong. Oh, he is physically fit. It's just um, – He's also very tall. And he makes me sad, guys. He just okay. makes me Look, sad. We've we've kind of realized this may be the year of Mike's redemption. Because okay. Because you, you, Antonio Gibson could have a decent year. Yeah. Madison is getting his opportunity. Uh -huh. I like um, it. What was the other – Who's one other player was jumping out from your history of, of standing for them all the time? I don't know. I can't Anybody remember, remember back there? There's another one. But, 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 but Herbert's Cla in that group too. But Cla uh, Claypool – I mean, yeah, maybe. If, if your maybe. trend continues. All right, maybe. who wins the division? Give me the order that you see um, this oh, division man. finishing. I'm I'm going to take – this might surprise you. I'm going to take the Packers to win this division. I'm taking the Packers to win. Um, Andy, who you got at top? I said give me the whole division. Oh, oh we're right. just doing the top? Yeah, it just is kind of fun. Hey, I'm going with the Packers. I'm going to take the Vikings. Because the I think the Packers actually have a good – defense uh -huh. like the the lions have made an attempt to fix things that's it's very tbd to go from how bad they were last year add a couple pieces and try and completely turn it around and i think everything is surrounding jordan love to go out there and with that defense yeah get it i done. mean the uh the lions are the betting favorites minnesota behind them bears and packers tied wow yeah. so um i'm gonna take the vikings and then I'm going to finish it out. I'm going to go Vikings, Lions, Packers, Bears. I'm going Packers, Vikings, Lions, Bears. Yep, me and Jay have it the same. All right. Let's do some best ball. Best ball breakdown presented by Underdog Fantasy. All right, what are we doing today, Jason? We're breaking it down the late quarterbacks that mm -hmm. you may want to stack with. Yeah, we're we're talking about, you know, if you look at last year, uh the the winner of the Best Ball Mania, uh Pat Grant had three quarterbacks all going later in drafts. He had Tom Brady, Tua, and Daniel Jones, and he took down millions of dollars. That is a 
fully legitimate strategy to have the later round guys. I know a lot of the times right now we're grabbing one of the studs and then rolling with two quarterbacks instead of the three quarterback build. You can win either way. The question is, who are the right guys to pick from the late quarterbacks that you're looking at and who are our favorites? Mike, why don't you start off sure. with your guy? It, I I don't understand the ADP of this player. It is Geno Smith of the Seattle Seahawks. Last year, I know that you know the, the, he finished as a quarterback five. I think that was propped up a lot by some just – just down years for for other quarterbacks. Lamar getting hurt. Played yet, every yet game. Again. Yeah, played every game. But he was the quarterback five. You can't take that away from him. He has the two elite wide receivers that he had last year. And then they added and an elite one. They added another elite wide receiver. The first wide receiver taken in this draft. I think by far the that would best. would be Jackson uh, Smith and Jigba. Yeah, by far the best rookie wide receiver. And a great and, pass catching And then in the second round, they took a running back who is a good pass catching running back. Like, they loaded Geno up. It's, it's just, it's wild to me that he's down here at QB 15. Like, he. Had a, it it, is, he had a great year. It is, I think, a reflection on the fear that he will regress and that it was a one-time event. And so you're right, though. The argument for the bull case, the uh, the weapons are tremendous. Mm -hmm. So, uh, you know, adding Zach Charbonnet, having Kenneth Walker healthy, you know, do they run the ball a little bit more than they did last year? I don't know. I don't know. Does their defense get better? You know what he wants to do, Pete Carroll. But uh, yep. Gino performed last year. Jason? Yeah, I'm going to go with a quarterback. If if you look at um, you know, last year's Best Ball Mania winner having Tua and Daniel Jones, Tua wasn't great all season and Daniel Jones wasn't great all season. But what they both were able to do is have monstrous games. Real big, I mean that's best ball. You want someone who can go out there and put on a show at one point in time. To me, Kyler Murray is being very undervalued. He his draft right now, he's the quarterback 21. And it's basically saying I don't like the Cardinals, and I think he's going to miss half the year. He has come out basically saying he's still aiming to be there week one. But if he's there week three or four, you know, it, he will, by the second half of the year, be healthy and active, and he can actually put up a 30-point game. He can regularly put up 20-plus points, uh, at, you know, at the at the position. I know there's questions and concerns about the the, the knee and will he run. These questions and concerns are why he's the quarterback twenty-one. If obviously, if he was healthy, I mean, there, you know, you're talking about a guy you'd be drafting up at, you know, quarterback five, six, seven range. He'd be uh, a high-end quarterback, and so we don't know how unhealthy or healthy he is. But he's being drafted as if he's got no chance to me right now of having a good season. I I think that that is a mistake. I mean, the, the history of of Kyler is when he's been playing football, he's extremely productive. Regardless of the questions around the injury or pocket pass or like the the resume so far has been very positive from fantasy production. Uh, I'll throw Aaron Rodgers being drafted as the quarterback 16 out there. You talked about it. Tua, Daniel Jones, it wasn't every week. But Tua had a six-touchdown game in week two against Baltimore. Daniel Jones had some really big weeks. There are going to be big weeks for Aaron Rodgers this year with this offense, with these weapons with the opportunity he has there. They're building the team around him. Everything is all in for the Jets. It might not be every week, which maybe you avoid him in redraft if you believe that. But I think Aaron Rodgers and then Anthony Richardson, who's just barely in this yeah, group. Yeah, that's, that's fair. That case is obvious, but mm -hmm. I mean, his potential on the ground, Shane Steichen, the offense. What if you get a little bit better than you expect? Both high upside players like Jason was talking about. All right, that was Best Ball Breakdown presented by Underdog Fantasy. Get your first deposit matched up to $100 by using the code BALLERS. BALLERS. Thanks, Mike. Back with another divisional breakdown on Saturday, third show of the week, NFC South, the Super Bowl winning NFC. That's right. See you then. Goodbye. Thank you for listening to another episode of the Fantasy Footballers Podcast. Join our fantasy football community on jointhefoot.com and follow us on Twitter at the FF Ballers.